I guess it's been a minute or two since I've updated our progress. It's been kind of busy at work, so I haven't gotten a whole lot done this past during the week anyways. See some fancy tinfoil looking stuff in there. I um, finished making all the fuel lines. Got the feed line, return line, lines out to the filter, and uh, making this fuel system has just been a giant uh, make the best of what you can because there's just not a lot of room. Um, as most of you know, on C5 Corvettes, it's your feed line, it's your return line, at least. Let me, let me back up a little bit. Since this is an early C5, it has a return line system on it. So I decided to keep that and run an adjustable fuel pressure regulator instead of switching over to the newer regulated filter assembly. I may have showed in the last video, I can't remember. Maybe I didn't, but I built a bracket off the coil uh, mounts to hold the fuel pressure regulator and I flipped the aeromotive uh, bracket from how it's shipped to uh, pick the uh, regulator up this way to uh, get as many of these fuel connections up on top of the engine so that we don't uh, have, you know, if in the event a fuel line were ever to leak, you don't want it dripping straight onto the header. The way I have the return line set up and obviously the way the, the factory feed and return come out of the firewall, they're over the exhaust system even when the car was factory. It's kind of a stupid design, but uh, you know they do their homework to try and eliminate any fire hazard. Um, this is PTFE hose. Uh, I don't, we don't really have access to uh, ethanol based fuels in our state so I did want to have the uh, you know any plans for the future to be not have to change hoses or anything so I went with the PTFE hoses tried to use as many straight fittings as possible that gets rid of um, um, the, the swivels have an extra o-ring in there so that's just one more potential future leak point so these are straights um, that's got a swivel o-ring, swivel o-ring, swivel o-ring, swivel o-ring, and then the one over there has a swivel o-ring. I've pressurized it. Um, I actually took the lines off the rails, capped this T, and then fed it into a jug and uh, ran a bunch of fuel through the, all the way out the end point of the lines to make sure there was no debris in there. Put it all back together. Uh, pressurized it actually uh, cracked one of these caps loose on each side on the fuel rails to uh, get a bunch of air out of the rails and we're getting closer to uh, starting it up but I gotta finish this damn power steering reservoir so that's what I'm doing today I've made this bracket already this is, uh, I'm not sure what gauge steel this is. It's probably uh, one size under eighth inch. And I'm spanning this alternator bracket bolt to this alternator bracket bolt. And uh, the way this is cast, this bottom edge is basically on the, the uh, alternator bracket. I've built this little hook that I'll weld on there that will uh, keep any potential sagging of the reservoir from the weight hanging on it so that's about where the reservoir is going to go but uh, I've got to go ahead and tack some bits onto this uh, this is I'm going to use part of the original reservoir bracket and uh, just kind of piece it together So I'm going to go ahead and get that stuff tacked together and then take it back off the car and finish it up and uh, show you guys what it looks like. 
All right, let's go get the uh, bracket out of our uh, handy dandy Dodge oven. There it is, baking away. Ooh, that's toasty. This part of the bracket from here and here, actually even this part, some of you will recognize this bracket, but uh, anyways, this is original. The part I'm, piece I'm holding is original. From here out, this part is new. Seems pretty strong for relatively thin material. I didn't want to make it uh, well, my paint job's not super fancy, but uh, not going to see any of it anyways. I really poured it on there while it was still hot. Pack all my crappy welds with paint. My little uh, clip turned out pretty good too. So that's going to sit right like that. No problems with the bolt lengths. That's a pretty thin bracket. It's like probably the equivalent of a washer. I'll thread that guy in real quick. So the hardest part of setting this bracket up was making sure that I had clearance for the main suction hose down to the pump. As a matter of fact, I don't think I'm going to tighten that bolt down yet because I'm probably going to have to take it back off to put that main hose in. The hose that goes off of this guy here, this goes down to the pump. But I can still set this in place to kind of show you how that's going to sit. I got that guy as low as I possibly could, but still have belt clearance. This is the hose I found for it at O'Reilly's. That's the number. Made by Precision. I believe it's a copy of a Gates hose. 5 8 inside diameter. I'm literally probably going to only use about that much of it. But uh, anyways, I'm not going to bore you with uh, fully assembling that. You, you kind of get the idea of it from there. And uh, when I do my next update, I'll let you know if it was an epic fail, but I don't see why it would be. I think all the hoses are going to fit fine. I have no idea what it's going to be like as far as hood clearance in the future, but... Uh, We'll learn that someday. If you guys have any questions on any of the fuel stuff that I've done or cobbling together this bracket, it's not tight, I gotta remember that, but once that lower bolt is tight, it's actually pretty sturdy. Uh, if you got any questions, fire them away. You know where to put them. One quick addition before somebody asks in the comments. I didn't really show it very well, but. Uh, this clamp right here, uh, it's a, am another Amazon special. So you got a bazillion dollar filter and then a bunch of ch Chinese stuff. Um, but anyways, this clamp is made by Evil Energy. Uh, like I said, picked up off of Amazon. It's uh, two inch, it's purpose made for holding uh, fuel pumps and fuel filters. I wanna say it was like $12.99. And it seems to be very, very well built for $12.99. So hopefully the little bugger wasn't made with forced monkey labor. But I don't think so.